tonight. Marcus fixes his bird. Zoe fixes her microphone. And Carl fixes his son. Marcus is an android who appears to be taking care of a kindly old man who lives in a very wealthy Actually, section we of Detroit. We don't know I that yet. I said appears. Well, his last mission, such as it was, was simply to go pick up some paints and take it Paint. home to the to this old man. Hence why it's and now, the painter. Right, because he is a painter. And not just a two coats on your house and call it a day painter. He actually creates artwork. He does painting for art. So now we're going to learn a little bit more about this fellow that Marcus is owned by, named Carl. You know, and I'm going to say this too. This is a very accurate representation of how a lot of real high-end old houses in Detroit look. Very much on this model. It's amazing. We actually rented one briefly in a place called Indian Village when we moved to Detroit some years ago, and it was really nice. It wasn't as nice as this, let me tell you Except what. Except when you broke your phone. But, but the style was definitely... You cracked your phone, right? That's not the house's fault. <laughs> just dropped, the phone. Just dropped the, the phone on the pavement. Nothing to do with the house. <laughs> just a little stone sitting on the pavement. Anyway, I'm just saying this is a very accurate representation. I loved. I think this is a shout out to the movie Blade Runner a little bit. You know, the mechanical, mechanical animals. Much different circumstances because that was supposed to be a post-apocalyptic society, but very nice. And I thought this too. This is an example of the kind of artwork apparently that Carl creates. I kind of like his style. I wish I could buy some of Carl's art. I don't think I like that one. I like that one. Where are you going? Marcus is... Marcus keeps... is the butler for this house, you know? He he takes ownership of it. He walks around, he takes a look at things, makes sure everything's in order. That's his job, right? What does it matter to ya? When you got a job to do, you got to do it well. You gotta give the other fella hell. Your job is to wake up Carl. He, he manages, he's also the manager of the house. Hello, giraffe. It's too bad Carl didn't have a mechanical giraffe. Well, that's interesting. Did you see that? What? He has a telescope pointed out the window. Hmm. I wonder if it's to look at the sky or to look at the neighbors. What do you think? Spy on the neighbors. That's a shout out to Alfred Hitchcock's, I think. Uh, what was that movie? I think it real old one. Uh. Good morning, Carl. Good morning. It's 10 a.m. <laughs> The weather is partly cloudy, 54 degrees, 80 percent humidity, with a strong possibility of afternoon Thank you, Siri. showers. It sounds like a good day to spend in bed. I did go to pick up the paint that you ordered. Oh yes, I've forgotten. That is the difference between you and me, right, Marcus? You never forget anything. Show me your arm, please, Carl. No. Carl. Carl. No, that would be me. I hate Thank cats. you. Hmm. I just opened my eyes and I'm already gritting my teeth. Oh. Humans are such a fragile machine. Sure. They break down so quickly. All this effort to keep them going. 
Okay. I'll take you to the bathroom now. Oh. By the way, for those of you who played Mass Effect, the voice actor for Carl is the same one who did the voice acting for Admiral Hackett. A minor but significant supporting character in the series. Anything special on the agenda today? Yes, there's the opening of your retrospective at the Museum the of Modern Art. The gallery director left four messages asking to confirm your attendance. Hmm. I haven't decided yet. We'll see about that later. Okay. What else? Just your usual fan mail. I've already answered. Thank you for being Carl's number one fan, Marcus said. <laughs> Any news from Leo? No, Carl. I can call him if you like. No. No, I don't bother. Father calling my son, he said. Interesting. And we're learning a little bit more about Carl here. And his own relationships. I'm starving. Well, your breakfast is ready. Bacon and eggs, just the way you like them. Thank you, Marcus. You're welcome. Big empty table for nothing. It's so lonely. It's lonely. It's just like these houses are really big. And I will say this: it's amazing how well these houses, um, how much better these houses that are this size run when you have a little bit of automation going on. We set up some. Uh, we have a. We have a somewhat, not large, but, you know, it's the multiple bedrooms kind of thing going on here. And it's an older house, but we set up a smart home system just so we didn't have to worry about light switches and, and the Varumba to, you know, to vacuum the carpet and that kind of thing. Makes it a little easier. Thank no you, question. Marcus. Television. And it's certainly cheaper than <clears throat> hiring somebody to do it, right? Just saying. Why don't you find something to do while I finish my breakfast? Sure. Hmm? Okay, cool. It is worthwhile to pay attention to the news stories. Plato is important. We should read Plato, by the way. Maybe we'll do that next week. Start with some Plato. What are you reading? Plato's Republic. It's one of the books you recommended. So, kind of what do you think? I quite like philosophy. Kind of a blueprint for fascism, if you ask me, but that's a It asks thing. the questions that I can't answer. You know, what is right or what is wrong, for example? It's not something that is so easy but to decide. Worth reading Asking that questions that have no answers is part of being human, Marcus. One day I won't be here to take care of you anymore. You'll have to protect yourself. Make your choices. Decide who you are and want to become. By the way, he says that no matter what. This world doesn't like those who are different, Marcus. Don't let anyone tell you who you should be. Let's go to the studio. A very different man compared to Todd, isn't he? And... Very different. You know a philosopher, an artist, a creator. And yet, Carl is not without his flaws. Carl is not without his regrets. Carl is someone as a man who's made some serious mistakes in his life, and we'll find out soon. That's in the next one. Let's see where we left off. 
Remove the sheet. was intentional. The ear looks like the mouth of the dragon and like the rest was like... Yeah, because there, there's a famous picture of a woman and if you look at it one way it looks like a young woman and if you look at it another direction it looks like an old woman. You know the picture I'm talking about? We'll have to bring it up. We'll find it and we'll insert it into the video for the audience at home. And then the other part. Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe the... The dragon is hiding just under the skin of humanity, you know. Maybe that was the intention of the artist. Like I said, I like Carl's art. I don't like his tattoo. Look at his arm. So, but I like the what's your verdict, Marcus? Oh, 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 oh. I'm not programmed to criticize art. I, you would be a much better judge than I would. The truth is, I have nothing left to say anymore. Each day that goes like by it. brings me closer to the end. I'm just an old man clinging to his right. brushes. That's Carl, come on. But enough about true. me. Let's see if you have any talent. I think hating yourself is kind Give of... A try. A necessary prerequisite for being an artist. Paint? But would I... Painting what? Anything you want. Give it a try. try man. <sighs> I don't know. three options. I love how... It's just like a couple of strokes and then... It's, I, I, lo I love how he's doing it like he's a laser printer. Just zip, zip, zip. Actually, no, that's not laser. That's dot matrix, I guess. That is a perfect copy. Oh, Carl. Look how Reality. amazing that was. The Chill painting out. is not about replicating the world. It's about interpreting, improving on it, showing something you see. Perhaps, but I think he did a darn good replication. Carl, I don't think I can do that. It's not in my program. I... Go on, go, try it. Grab that canvas. Do something for me. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Trust me. Try to imagine something that doesn't exist, something you've never seen. Now concentrate on how it makes you feel and let your hand drift across the canvas. Hey, Dad. Is Leo? Leo? I didn't hear you come in. No, I was in the neighborhood. I Just thought I'd stop by. by. Yeah, how it is. It's been a while, right? You all right? 
You don't look so good. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Shaking <laughs> Hey, listen, uh, I need some cash, Dad. Some cash. Again? What happened to the money I just gave you? Uh, well, it's, it just goes, it's you know? Just goes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're on it again, aren't you? No. No, no, I swear, it's not that. No, uh, don't lie to me, Leo. What difference does it make? I just need some cash, that's all. Sorry. The answer is no. What? Why? You know Parenting why. Parenting pro tip. Much easier to lay down the law yeah, ten yeah, years before know this moment than at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, rather, you'd rather take care of your uh, plastic toy here than your own son, right? Tell me, Dad, what's, what's it got that I don't? It's smarter? More obedient? Not like me, right? I don't know if he's smarter. Definitely but You know more what? Obedient. This thing is not your son. It's a machine! Leo, that's enough! Enough. You don't care about anything except yourself and your goddamn paintings. You've never loved anyone. You never loved me, Dad. You never loved me. And like I said, he's made some mistakes. Now, the way the game presents it, it's very easy for you to say to yourself, well, obviously, you know, Leo's a jerk. Carl's a real nice guy. And indeed, that is correct. But Leo got that way for a reason. And is it likely, plausible, believable that Carl, being a tremendously successful, dedicated, passionate, and single-minded artist, might perhaps not have been the best of fathers. Might have been a little more neglectful. And the answer is yes, most likely. And the other question is this, is Leo's criticism that Marcus is really just a substitute son, you know, the successful son he never had, the son he really wanted but didn't have? What, do you, what say you, Zoe? Do you think that's where, do you think Leo's complaint has some validity? Yes. Why is that? It's just, it makes sense. I mean, if Leo, I'm not saying that Leo is right here. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying if he is, if he always forgot about Leo, then, well, what if, say say they got Marcus while Leo was about 10, all right? Mm -hmm. And then it just started taking care of him more? Then yeah, I mean, that, that's that's an interesting point about the age differential there, right? What if you're 10 years old, because Leo looks like he's about 20, maybe he's 25, he's certainly not 30 at this point, I don't no. think, you know, he's, he still looks really kind of on the younger side, younger adult, right? You know, you're 10 years old, and dad says, hey man, here's a robot. Oh, cool, that's right. Except it's a robot that looks, acts, talks, just like a normal human, just like a normal young adult human, quite honestly, right? And all of a sudden, your father starts interacting with the robot more than you. And rather than talking to you and teaching you things and showing you things and guiding and mentoring you, he's spending his time having fun with the robot. That's a weird, that's a weird parenting situation. In fact, I think it gets even worse when he gets to 15, right? And all of a sudden, he's kind of an adult, kind of in the same, you know, kind of looks like, Marcus, except here's the thing. Marcus does everything that your parents want them to do. Leo is constantly getting criticized, constantly complaining about him. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that one playing out totally. And that's the that's the hidden, I think, read between the lines scenario here um, that's going on with Carl and and uh, and Marcus and Leo. But that said. Every jerk out there has got a reason why he's a jerk, right? So just because Leo has a reason, like we understand the, what those reasons are and we can probably lay the blame for a good percentage of them at Carl's feet, it doesn't necessarily excuse what's going to happen next. So we'll have to see that soon. All right. Last word's yours. Um, subscribe. <laughs> and you were young. Your heart
was an open book Oh, you used to say, live and let live Did you know, you did, you know, you did But if this ever-changing world in which we live in Makes you give it a cry Say, live and let die 